Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tori if you're new here and today I am excited to share the new series. We are taking one ingredient and we are making it five ways. We are going to start with these garbanzo beans or chickpeas. This is a pantry staple for me. I will tell you all about the benefits of garbanzo beans. I often get questions about some of the pantry staples that I have and I wanna show you all my favorite ways to use them. If you are new here, we would love it if you hit that subscribe button. We make videos three to five times a week all about life on a budget here in Northern Colorado. We love food, everything about it. We love to garden and we like to prep. So if you're into that, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you are giving these videos a big thumbs up if you enjoy them. And without further ado, we're going to get right into today's chickpea video. First up on my list is going to be crispy chickpeas. That is the easiest recipe. I am actually saving all of the liquid here and we are doing a part two to this video of everything you can do with this chickpea liquid or aquafaba. So I'm going to rinse these off in the sink and then I'm gonna get them on a pan and season them. I have my oven at 400 and I have these rinsed off. I am going to put this on top of a salad today, but they are super delicious. If you just eat them plain, you can put them on top of a pasta salad even. That's really tasty on top of tacos. But all I did was put a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna put a little bit more. My link for this Gundry's MD olive oil is always in the description. And then I'm using the Kinder's all-purpose seasoning. Um, you could certainly use a lined uh, baking sheet if you want, but I just do this. Um, I don't know. It really just depends on what I'm cooking for. So I'm going to bake these at 400 for around 15 minutes and halfway. I just go in with my hot pad and give them a shake. They are a crowd pleaser for kids too. Lila loves these roasted chickpeas. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Ooh, the wilder's having a jelly sandwich. All right, let's get into the next recipe. We are going to be making some breakfast burritos and we're doing like a chickpea scramble. I'm not gonna air quote that because it is a chickpea, but um, it will be a scramble. Um, so we have chickpeas. I'm going to smash them in the pan. I am saving the liquid. We have one potato, a half of a bell pepper, a half of an onion, not a lot. I'm going to put that all together and in my scramble, I'm just gonna use some of my favorite vegan cheese, and then everybody else's, I will put the eggs, the cheese, and the meat. But this is a great substitute um, for your classic scramble if you weren't going to use tofu. Tofu scrambles are pretty common um, around the plant-based community, but if you're trying to stay away from soy, chickpeas are a great alternative. So you are gonna season this however you want. If you have kala namak, which is an Indian spice that has um, a bit of like an eggy flavor to it. You could put that on there. Um, it's also called black salt. You can find that um, at different uh, specialized grocery stores, but it really depends on your area. So I'm not going to use that. I'm just using the classic salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder. And then I will show you how I assemble the burritos. Here is the uh, little scramble with the chickpeas, potatoes, bell pepper, and onion. And then optional, you don't have to do this. Yes, you could make these with shelf-stable items, but I have them laying around. The chow plant-based queso cantina style, I can't wait to try. That one's gonna expire first, but I did just pick up the plant-based hatch queso from Simple Truth at my Kroger. This has better ingredients, so I'm interested to try that too, but we are gonna use this and put it on the bottom of a flour tortilla. I'm going to roll them up and put them in the oven. Um, that's how I like to crisp them up. And then over here I have the beef going. I just have some shredded beef from the night before with some unsalted butter. I'm going to put in some eggs and that will be the family's burritos. Okay, so the chow is a soy-based product. I'd say it's a little gelatinous. It has potato starch in it. Um, I think it has some nutritional nutritional yeast. 
which we know I'm not a fan of, but that's okay. So I have my baking pan um, drizzled with some olive oil, and I am just going to wrap these up like this. I have some guacamole in there, and that will be a really nice topper, or you could use ketchup, but I do seam side down and bake at 400. Those were mine, those first two. Now I'm doing everybody else's. So I have this, and then I'm gonna add the egg and beef mixture. I put pepper jack cheese on the bottom of that, just the regular kind. I think my husband gets the Tillamook, which is out of budget, but that's okay. He enjoys the, <laughs> enjoys the um, flavor of the Tillamook, because it's like a thick sliced one, but these go on the other side of the pan. We still have plenty of chickpea mixture left, which is great because you can put this in a taco. You could obviously put it in a burrito. You could add taco seasoning and put it into um, like an enchilada. You could add some buffalo sauce and make it into your buffalo chicken pizza or you could do a buffalo chicken chickpea dip you could add some mayo and grapes and a little bit of mustard and serve this chilled for a chickpea tuna salad um, you could add this to regular pasta salad with some italian dressing dressing olives tomatoes um, what else could you put in there feta if you wanted to and make like a mediterranean pasta salad you could add it to couscous so many things you can do with this i will show you when the burritos pop out of the oven right, here are the families i just gave the kids some scramble and some of the chickpeas they love beans as we know um but here are two burritos for my husband and then here are mine the chow melts nicely you can kind of see it towards the side and i'm gonna serve mine with guacamole my husband likes hot sauce but you could do ketchup with this if you wanted it is so easy but i cannot wait to show you this next recipe okay here's a pretty easy one basic ingredients it's falafel they do not need to be complicated i make them into little patties so i can put it on a sandwich or into a pita but you could put them into little balls if you wanted to today i'm gonna deep fry it because it's my birthday and i feel like it but um you don't have to do that you could bake these you could air fry them you could just fry them on a pan um, and just i don't know hope that they don't stick but everything goes into the food processor you're going to do chickpeas half of an onion whatever seasonings you want normally people use parsley not a fan so i'm going to do dill and then of course i reserve the liquid and i will show you the finished um, consistency and then i will show you how we fry it and then put it on a sandwich you could go two ways if you don't like falafel you could add olive oil and then a little bit of tahini and an extra flavor like maybe some basil and make this into a hummus I'm not including hummus in this video just because I feel like that's the classic go-to for chickpeas and um, I've done hummus on the channel so much but basically from there you could add that creamy olive oil and some ice water and make this into a really creamy delicious hummus and serve it with some veggies or pita um i probably shouldn't have added water to be honest with you i added too much you really only need like a half teaspoon if any so now i'm adding some stale not stale but i'm adding some sourdough bread you could add some sort of binder if you wanted you could do some flax meal um chia hemp really anything but um yeah just gonna add this in here. This is turning into a little bit more 
um, of two ingredients because I forgot about lemon. I feel like that's key, especially when you're using dill. But let me mix this together and see if this is a good consistency. Well, we shall see. So we're gonna fry this into patty form. And I like to serve mine just with some classic burger toppings, lettuce, tomato. I do some chipotle mayo sometimes, regular mayo. You could put tzatziki on this and put it in a pita. But falafels are very versatile. I've even just added like a can of chicken to this for my husband and made it into little patties that way. Could add a can of tuna to this if you wanted to just add that extra protein, but it's just a classic uh, Mediterranean food that I've always loved. Uh, you could add olives to this if you wanted to. So many possibilities. I hope um, these suggestions don't overwhelm you. I, I guess my mind just gets uh, really interested in ingredients and everything that you can do with them so i hope it's helpful and like i said please drop any questions you may have um, about certain ingredients down in the description box because i am willing to talk it out in the comments with you don't ever think that you're bothering me and um yeah i'm gonna get these into patty form and then i'm going to fry them <laughs> Okay, here they are frying up. I kind of have an uneven pan, so I have it like resting on a spaghetti squash, but um, you really just want it to be hot enough to fry on each side. And I was just looking at this and thinking that we could do it in like a waffle maker too and make little falafel waffles if you wanted to. I don't know if it would be too PC for that, but could certainly give it a try. That might be a fun thing to do with the kids someday. All right, here's the finished product. I had some trouble deep frying. I don't do it often. Um, so I only have avocado oil and I think that's where I went wrong. So what I ended up doing was baking this at 425 for around, I'd say 10 to 12 minutes on each side. I topped it with tomato, cucumber, olives, some dill, and hello. Some of the Simple Truth sour cream, the <laughs> vegan sour cream. I'm going to try this out, but it does already have a lot of flavor. So this is another option and let's jump into the next one. Hey friends, the next one is going to be a freezer meal. So this would be great if you're pregnant and you're prepping, you wanna help out. Maybe you are busy during the weeknights, can't cook anything from scratch. You can just dump and go this in the crock pot. You could put it in the oven and serve it over rice or quinoa. You could add canned chicken to this. Really just about anything. You could add some extra proteins with beans if you wanted, but it's super simple. I usually make mine in like one giant batch and then I divide it in three bags and we usually eat it as a side here and there, but it's super simple. So you're gonna need one can of fire roasted tomatoes, or if you have a bunch of tomatoes like me, dice those up and put those in here. You're gonna need garbanzo beans, of course. I drained liquid and kept it. You're gonna need some onion. This is all I have, otherwise I'd add more. You're gonna need one can of unsweetened coconut milk, and then a couple of teaspoons of curry powder, salt and pepper. Alternatively, you could use this creamy oat milk cumin carrot soup and put that in there. This is super delicious. I got a chance to try it and um, it has a really great flavor. You could also add some greens like I am or maybe some frozen broccoli just to bulk this up. Um, again, we serve it over rice or quinoa, so it's plenty of food. We serve it with some homemade naan, but the goal is to put everything into this giant bowl and then put it in some freezer bags and then it makes a really easy weeknight meal. I'm trying to do something for everybody here, so I hope you enjoy this really easy one. Okay, so I'm gonna dump this in. I got a question on a couple videos back, like why do I have all of those veggies back there? It's, it's truly what we eat all day. So sometimes I just store it in the, like back in that area, lemon I drink with my water. Um, you can do like diced tomatoes on just about everything. I am shaking this like a fiend over here. There's a top and then there's the liquid itself. So you could use um, canned 
coconut cream, coconut milk for just about everything. Um, if you want to do a video on coconut cream, I'm your girl, I have you covered. Um, eating this plant-based lifestyle has gotten me pretty creative with ingredients. So when it comes to, uh, you know, like canned non-dairy items, I was really skeptical at first, but I honestly can't taste a difference now. I season to taste. Um, I'm sorry, I never really truly have the exact measurements, but you just gotta do what works for you. So that's going in. A little bit of salt. I tend to add salt towards the end of recipes just because I find that it really loses a lot of flavor. We all know greens cook down real well, so I'm gonna add a few generous portions of that. I'm actually gonna leave the broccoli out. I wanna use that broccoli in there, and I, I don't really get extra ingredients just for videos, so we are cooking with what I had. Some people are like, you had five cans of chickpeas on hand? Yes, I did. I have um, five to 10 of most of our favorite items in the prepper pantry, so you know it takes a little bit to build your stock. Um, I did wanna address a comment that I got a couple videos ago, but it was like, how did you learn how to do this? Um, I'll tell you, uh, we're still learning, first of all. We're not experts, and we're just ordinary people. <laughs> we, we're a cop and a teacher, and um, we're luckily in our young 30s, and I mean, we've had the internet at our disposal, and YouTube um, is where I go when I want to learn something. Um, there are many books out there. If you go to your public library, um, when it comes to preserving your own food, uh, using shelf-stable items, um, making shelf-stable items from things in the garden and I learn a lot from that but to be honest with you you know times have changed and we've learned a lot um from you know preserving your own food so it's I mean when it comes down to it I usually look to the internet as much as I loathe it I feel like it's just such a good and bad thing um we are firm believers that our kids will not have access to the internet for a long time as long as we can help it um you may not see my kids on devices or anything like that and um you know i'm i'm embarrassed to say they see me on my device and it's it's hard so sorry to get off on a tangent um from the chickpeas but while i'm stirring this is the kind of thing that i think about so it was uh, you know it's my birthday today so it's just we went out as a family and I, I did see a lot of kids on devices and they were being calm and quiet and collected and you know a part of me is like oh my goodness my kids are screaming and playing in puddles and um, I guess I I didn't I've never been embarrassed by that but it's just um, I don't know I guess like a part of your mom anxiety is like oh my goodness what are other people gonna think and then you realize that you really don't care my kids are having fun in a puddle and with a stick so it's just like a nice little eye-opening experience when you put your phone down um, I'm certainly not perfect but it was just something that was on my mind today so these are going to go changing subjects real quick before I get off on a tangent here um, into some bags so i have just these gallon bags you can get them at the dollar tree but i like these because they sit they sit down they have that little square at the bottom and um i don't really label these i can tell what they are but you can label if you want and they stay in your freezer for as long as you want i'll tell you this can of tomatoes it expired um but i'm using it anyways we will be just fine didn't smell terrible you know how i feel about all those expiration dates so do what works for you this is delicious so so yummy on quinoa you can serve it with shrimp chicken extra beans some broccoli, really anything. All right, here they are, three freezer bags full. I don't think I actually said how long they'll last, but honestly, they can last for a year. You will be just fine um, in your freezer in the event of a power outage. Eat the crap out of this curry and then you'll be fine. Um, we're gonna move on to the next recipe. I hope you enjoyed this easy one. All right, the next up is gonna be a buffalo chickpea dip, but you could use this 
whole base on a pizza, make it a buffalo chickpea pizza. You could put it into macaroni and cheese, make it a buffalo chickpea mac and cheese, or you could just serve it with veggies and chips like I'm about to do. There are so many other ways that you could use this, but these are just a few that came off of the top of my head. I'm using the red hot uh, Frank sauce, some diced onion. Um, I have some olives. I have a whole can of chickpeas with the liquid reserved, and then I have the Kite Hill cream cheese. So I'm going to smash the chickpeas, mix everything together, bake it at 400 for around 20 minutes, and serve Serve it up. This is going to be super delicious. friends I came outside for just a quick minute but I did want to kind of end the chickpea video here and address a few things that were on my mind while I was making this video one is dietary preference if you want to add meat to this go ahead if you're gluten free substitute something if you are stumped and you need help I will try my best to help you um, again I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian I'm just a girl that had a lot of practice when it comes to ingredients like this so that was number one number two is shelf stable meals and that is um, if you are into that if you if you want to see items used multiple ways from the prepper pantry or just items in general um, so that kind of leans into the next one comment down below what kind of ingredients you want to see i've seen it a lot lentils definitely is going to be one of them i have couscous i have bulgur wheat um many different types of items uh, different types of beans so drop those down make sure you let me know what you want to see um, number three is I'm still doing a Q&A, a 7K Q&A. It's helpful that it rhymes, right? Uh, so if you have any questions, now is the time to ask them. Um, it, it's, it's good and it's bad. Uh, we're growing. So I find it uh, just um, not overwhelming, but a little hard to keep up with the amount of comments. It's just so amazing. I, I, I am so truly humbled that I actually uh, get to talk to each and every one of you. I just find so much value maybe it's a selfish thing but so much value in our conversations because this community is a wealth of knowledge it is amazing if you're not talking to each other please do because all of you just have so many amazing ideas and I think it's wonderful I think YouTube can be such a phenomenal place for all of us so I think that was the last thing um, if you want any specific recipes please let me know in the comments I will try and type it out for you again I kind of wing it when it comes to seasoning spices and things of that nature we did get quite a few things at the garden store today for my birthday um, i'm really excited about that i'm not one to celebrate birthdays it's not really my thing which is kind of shocking to be a gemini and not really you know like your birthday um it just reminds me of getting older um so yeah 32 it is uh, been quite the year um it's been rough but we are only coming out of it. I mean, we just, I, I am so incredibly grateful for this life, for this community. So I'm excited. We got quite a bit of gardening things and I can't wait to show you the new crops that we're going to be planting. So I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for all of your support. I so appreciate every single one of you. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative. I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.